So I was looking into some of my old source code that I wrote back when I was in college, and one of them was in Turbo C++ from Borland's uh, compiler. And I was wondering, is there any way to get that those, those old programs running? And at the time, I found a download for Turbo C++, which included DOSBox, and I installed it. And I don't remember if this is where I downloaded it from, but I did find it again, and so it's over here on archive.org. And um, I've always liked those worm style games or the snake games. And so that's, the, you know, so you can see that in the fact that I've written a couple of different versions of it over the years, but I've never really made it into a uh, anything in, like a, a, a any kind of a terrific game or anything. I just always thought it was interesting the programming concepts of, of, of the worm itself. And then and then in, on the other side, I do like playing those types of games. So let's uh, let's open it up and take a look at my old program here from the early 90s. Okay, so here is here is my program. And I wrote this many, many years ago, so I apologize if I don't uh, understand it completely anymore. But the way I recall was that it was a structure here and a pointer to another structure. And so anytime you increase the node, you, you would allocate a new structure and then point the last one to the, to the previous one, etc. And I'll throw this up on my GitHub, see if you can spot the bug in it. There's actually a, a bug in the program, uh, probably more than one. But it's really a short, succinct program. And let's go ahead and run it and see what, how it works. OK, so here is the program running. I have the little instructions, A to insert a node, D to delete, E to end the program, equal or minus to increase or subtract the delay. And then what it doesn't show is you use the arrow keys to move the worm around. So press any key to continue. Here we go. So it's moving around really fast. I'm going to slow it down. Or Oops, that's speeded up. So I'll slow it down a little. And then I'll move it around. A to increase nodes. And then D to delete nodes. <laughs> won't let me get rid of it completely and then e to end so that that is my little turbo c program for the day here so what i wanted to do was take this example and try to write it from scratch in assembly language for the commodore 64 it should be a fun exercise i think Quickly, if you're enjoying this video on writing a worm style program for the Commodore 64 in assembly language and would like to learn more assembly language for the Commodore 64, check out Derek Morris's book over at RetroGameDev.com. Okay, so I have five versions of the worm program which I'm going to share with you really quickly. I have my first program, worm.asm, and it's really short. The, the concept here is to draw the worm, uh, use, store the worm tail or the worm body in a, in a memory location, which I put down here, worm1 and worm2, which I re uh, later renamed those to worm1x and worm1y. And the idea was for you to store its positions, the X position and the Y positions right here, and then you move an offset. You increase an offset into where that worm is at, as it moves um, left, right, up, or down. And then I moved on to worm worm 2, the which is essentially the same as worm 1. And let me, let me show you. I, I didn't really want to show worm 1. It was almost the same as worm 2. And so this was my first, kind of the first entry to build the little snake with the number two. And I guess I made the length of the tail pretty long, or the body. And, and I have a significant delay to slow it down. 
and then like a debug statement on the top left. <laughs> the top left at 400, the top left screen is like a debug statement. Now, moving on from worm two to worm three, all, all it, it's the same as worm two, except I added, I added a hit detection. So I have a macro to poke a character onto the screen at a, at a X position and a Y position. So you erase the starting position and then you draw the body character. And then I, in this version, I wanted to have a head character or a, the, a character that's different from the body. And then I have a peak command to check the position of the head. If it's not a space, then you just basically loop forever right here. So let's see what that looks like. So you can see I increased the, de the or decreased the delay significantly. And I have the uh, tail way, way, way longer at this point. So just to show, uh, get a better look at it, we'll, we'll decrease the length of the tail significantly and we'll increase the delay significantly and run it again. So here I made it 20 on the length. And when, as soon as it hits a, a, a character that's not a space, it dies. So this is really this, a skeleton program here, and um, I'm, I'm going to throw it up on my GitHub. Then I went to worm four, move it over into view, and in worm four, all I did was I'm adding the border around the screen. So uh, it has something to run into, and there's a few bug fixes thrown in also. So now I have a red border, and if you run into the border, program's over. So that was Worm 4. Uh, I also experimented, while I'm here in Worm 4, I was experimenting around with the length. So if you have a length of 2 of this worm, I'm calling it worm, by the way, not a snake, but... So the body is two and the head is one. You see that, right? So it's really three. And when the head hits something, the program ends right now. And then if you go down from there, if you go to a, a make it a length of a one, that means you have you have one character for the body, one character for the head. And then if you make it zero, this is a part that I was struggling with earlier. If you make it zero, this wasn't working right in prior builds. It only moves the head. There is no body. So I had to put a, a, an if statement, an if statement in, in order to check for that right here. Load the length. If the length is zero, don't draw the body character. Just skip it. That's what this is. That's what this part of the the program instruction is doing. And you know, I glazed over the the. I'm pressing the keys on the keyboard. Uh, w to go up. A is left. S is right. And Z is down. Also, uh, you know, I, I didn't mention, but the border that I drew around the screen, I grabbed that from a previous video I did, the source code for that, and I just turned it into a, a single draw border command. And I just copied and pasted that code in so I didn't have to redo that work. Moving on to worm five. Uh, this is the final uh, build that are the uh, modification to the program that I've written so far. And this, this thing is still a skeleton. The whole idea here was to draw random characters on the screen and have them just something that you have to dodge, almost making it like a mini a mini game out of it. 
And the way I decided to implement was every time you move, it builds, it draws, it puts a random character on the screen. Actually, it puts the letter A in a random position, X and Y, on the screen. And that was just to see, just to show um, how to do that. And so I did a segment on building this random, drawing this random characters, and I'll show that now. So when I brought in my other code, I previously had written a random a randomizer routine. So I'm gonna bring that in. And we'll bring it into worm five. And if I'm being smart, I need to add comments. And why not start with worm four here? So worm four, add and border around the screen. With worm five, we will sort of add in random characters on the screen or draw something like that. those at the bottom Not that far in the bottom we'll need to call the initialization to random we got a rand max that I'll need Create a random max variable. Just so it's clear that I'm working with worm five now. It's right there. And random max. Now you could draw a random character every time the worm moves. That's what I'm gonna do, it's the easiest way to just get started to see what it would look like. So we'll have to create a subroutine for that. Right after you draw the head, JSR draw random character. And just to make it easy, we'll keep it close right here. We'll load, we want to do a, a number between 1 and 39. So we're going to load a 39, store it into random max. And JSR the rand routine to pick a random number. Pretty sure that's how it works. And we might even uh, think, come to think of it, be able to, this might tweak our delay here a little too because it's taken some cycles. And we want to do the same thing. Well, this will be, this will give us a number between zero. So let's, and zero and 39. So let's 
load it to 38. Increment it by one. I don't know. Maybe store it in a temp x. I'm not sure if I should use the same temp x as uh, the other one, so we'll so we'll do a char x. to go 0 to 25 so instead of 25 24 and 23 I didn't do my JSR here JSR rand Now, oops, I don't need this anymore. Now, we want to do that poke AXY thing. So it's a random character, we can make it a, a letter A. And we'll, let's see, let's, what we'll do here, char X, char Y. And just for, to get it in here, copy these, probably put them back down there, but for now I want to leave them close so I can understand later on. And we'll see what errors we have when we first compile. And we'll give it a test run. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's try that again. It didn't quite look like it was working right. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, so you could see... The pacing of the randomness is way too fast. But maybe if we add the delay, make it slower, that would help. But no, that's just way too fast. So let, let, let's do the delay thing, though. Make this a lot higher. makes it a little better. Oops. Let's try that again. Oh no, that's kind of it's kind of too slow. Anyway, yeah, so that We'll do it. I think this took took us from soup to nuts on drawing a worm character all the way up into making a mini game, which um, it's not that impressive, but uh, it's kind of cool. There's tons of uh, variations you can make on uh, different games. I'd be interested to seeing what some of you could come up with if you wanted to, to take a look at this uh, program code. I'll throw it up on my GitHub and you can go check it out and make your own tweaks to it. Thanks for watching.